Um, but this Matisse is specific because it is uh, uh, related to Cubism. It is also very specific because, and that's an interesting point, because it is the interpretation by Matisse of a copy he made when he was young of a still life in the Louvre. And this is a still life. And this is the copy. So, it is fascinating. This is very fascinating. Matisse made the copy you have here in 1893. 1893, he was young. As I told you, he was born in 1869. This is the copy. This is the original, which you can see in the Louvre. Uh, Matisse is one of these painters who used to go and study in the Louvre and study by copying, but who were also paid for their copies. So it was not only a way of learning, it was also a way of making uh, some money. Because you, you could sell your copy, of course. And so he had made this copy, and so I repeat in 1893, and in 1915, so uh, 22 years later, he did this, which is the interpretation of this painting he had copied. So, which means that you imagine to copy such a painting, it takes some time. You don't do it in uh, five minutes. Huh? It's, it's quite complex. Huh? Many details. It's, a, it's full of details. So he spent probably hours and hours, days and days, in front of the painting to copy it. And years later, when he was in this process, thinking about Cubism, he was close with Juan Gris. That's an interesting point I cannot develop. Uh, they were very close huh? with Juan Gris. Uh, he said he, he, he had this idea of rework on this painting, but reworking on this painting, he was also reworking on his own work. Huh? So, this to, to show you how a painter uh, can copy and interpret, the two things are different, but that a copy is already an interpretation, an interpretation can go very far away from the copy, but the interpretation can be also a way of going back to uh, a, a painting which was um, uh, an experience of, 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 of the gaze, of, the, of looking, of, uh, first an experience of looking. Do you have any remark? What is beautiful in the uh, uh, painting uh, of 1915, of course, if co in comparison with the original, is the uh, treatment of color and, uh, and uh, uh, sections of color. Huh? It's um, about sections, and, uh, because you can say plan, plans, but we have also sections. And of course, when you look at the, at the, uh, at the painting, the Dutch painting, uh, uh, there is not such a thing. The Dutch painting is, uh, uh, is dated uh, 1640. So in a way, he had uh, uh, appropriated the painting before interpreting it. Huh? So, because copying is a, is a way of appropriation. Huh? So, there was an appropriation and then an interpretation. Okay, alors, now let's consider a third example 
of this kind of relationship to the past in the field of the tableau. Huh? I'm talking about the tableau, huh? not about uh, other ways. A, a, a third example is that one. <laughs> Beautiful. You probably know. Uh, I will not develop because uh, uh, a new uh, kind of interpretation, very free interpretation, even uh, freer than uh, Matisse. Huh? Uh, so you have on the left the Janstein uh, painting uh, from the uh, 17th century, uh, which is in, uh, uh, in the Rijk Museum in Amsterdam, and uh, the uh, 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 painting by Miro, uh, which is at the, in the Peggy Guggenheim collection in Venice. Uh, look at the way uh, 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 Miro distorts totally the proportions, but keeping, keeping the composition. That's, you know, what is so interesting about tableau and composition. Uh, there is a distribution of elements. A composition is about elements. Huh? The idea of elements is a key word for, to think about composition. And it's also the key word for construction. Huh? And elements makes the continuity between two, let's say, uh, pictorial, two moments of, of a pictorial culture. The moment of composition, the moment of construction. We are in the beginning of 21st century. We can, we must, if we want to go uh, 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 to forward, yeah. <laughs> forward. Uh, we must think of composition and construction together. Voilà. We cannot anymore oppose construction to composition. That's my thesis. And uh, uh, there are, you see it clearly here, uh, related when the composition is so clearly about elements. That's what you see here. M Miro takes out the elements of the composition, and he transforms them, distorts them, redistributes them. But at the end, you can, and it's, it's, a, and it's nice also to make the comparison, you can relate the composition of Miro to, the, to the, the first one, and you see that it's an interpretation, but, but it's not a negation at all. It is... Uh, uh, an interpretation. Voilà. These uh, few examples uh, were a kind of introduction to my eight points. And now I will propose you eight points uh, about uh, uh, the tableau, the tableau and the composition. <coughs> voilà. This is the first point. <laughs> it's a little bit dry, huh? <laughs> after uh, all the images you have seen, there is this French word tableau. Why do I use this word? Not only because I am French, because um, uh, it says very specific things and you don't have these ideas uh, in the uh, uh, two equivalent in English. A uh, tableau is not an easel painting and is not a picture. And a picture is not an image. Voilà. This is what I want to develop. Why a tableau is not an easel painting? Uh, because it's not reducible to the easel painting. Of course, an easel painting is a tableau. But the tableau is not an easel painting. Voilà. <laughs> the easel painting is just one category of the tableau. 
And a tableau is not even necessarily painterly, made of painting. You can have, it's obvious now with Jeff Hall, for example, you can have a photographical tableau. And I must confess that I am, that I am quite responsible for this idea of the photographical tableau. I say responsible because it's used now in such a way that I would have preferred not to invent this idea. Okay. Uh, but uh, a tableau is not an easel uh, uh, painting or an easel picture. Um, also because the tableau is not the definition of the tableau is not coming from the idea, from the easel, from the use of the easel. You can have a tableau produced without an easel. So why do you say, why, why would, would, would we say easel painting if the tableau can be produced without an easel? For example, Albert produced hundreds of, of uh, paintings without an easel. The paintings were on the table. And uh, uh, Pollock, another example, made a beautiful tableau uh, on the floor. So there is no easel. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you know, even on a very factual uh, uh, plan, <laughs> it's funny, uh, the tableau is not <laughs> uh, an easel painting. Then it's not a picture. It's not a picture, uh, why? Hello. And this is a very fascinating point. It's, it's beautiful uh, to use several languages. Because in French, we have tableau. In English, there is no tableau. But in English, there is picture. And in French, there is not picture. And we need both. We need to think the, the, the tableau, the picture, and, and the picture. We need to think what is in the tableau which is not in the picture, but also we need to think the picture as opposite to the image. Voilà. Pictorial is related to picture. We don't have, in French, pictorial, for example. We don't have this idea of a pictorial tradition. We have, uh, when we say, tradition picturale, it's much more limited than pictorial tradition, which can include, for example, illustration, everything. Uh, when we say pictural, it's much more about high painting in French. Alors, what is a tableau? <laughs> what is a tableau? It's very simple. You can give a very simple definition of a tableau. It is a plan. A plan. A plane. A plane. Excuse me. It makes an object. This plane is an object. It's both a plane and an object. The, an object, which is a plane. <laughs> it is limited. This limitation is most of the time produced, indicated by a frame. But the frame is not the limitation. The limitation is. Uh, 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 sig uh, uh, signif signifié, uh, um, indicated by the frame. This object, with its limitation, uh, uh, is uh, autonomous. It means that uh, it can be moved. No, let's not say that it is autonomous first. Let's, it can be moved. Uh, it's not dependent upon the place where it is presented. It is presented, for example, I can present a, a, a tableau on this wall and uh, one day and uh, the day after I will put it on that wall. So it's not dependent on this wall. <laughs> uh, that's a... Uh, difference with the fresco, which is dependent on the wall. The, it's why the tableau, it's why the easel painting or easel picture 
uh, is close to the tableau because the easel picture, picture is precisely this kind of object you can move. Uh, but as I told you, the tableau is not reducible for, to the easel uh, picture for the reasons I said. Uh, so, the tableau is movable, uh, not dependent on, uh, as an object it's movable, it's not dependent on the, uh, uh, on the wall, on the place, even largely, uh, where it is presented. Um, it is different from the fresco, it is different also from an image on a piece of paper. A tableau is different from a print, from a drawing, from, a, uh, from a, all these kind of images or pictures. Why? For a very specific reason, which is fundamental, that a tableau is uh, presented to the viewer to the regardeur, as we say in French, it's so much better, regardeur. Uh, that's a, the, wor the word used by Duchamp. Uh, you have to know, because you probably you don't know, that it's a banal word, word regardeur, not used anymore in, uh, in the normal French uh, of today. But when Duchamp said, ce sont les regardeurs qui font le tableau, Ce sont les regardeurs qui font le tableau. He was using a very banal word, regardeur. Regardeur is as banal, was, excuse me, at this time, as banal as viewer today. He's talking about history. Never forget this. He's, it means that it is the way you look at, the interpretation of, which makes the work. That's fundamentally what he means. But, in fact, he points also something more fundamental, <laughs> which he didn't really address in a funny way, which is that the tableau is made for a certain type of experience of looking at which is confrontational. Voilà. This is the key point. A tableau is made for the viewer to be confronted with. The painting, the tableau, excuse me, is because, it, I mean, it can be a painting or a photograph. It's why, okay, it's, you have to say a tableau. It's on the wall. You are in front of it. Looking at the painting, you are in front of it. And to look at the painting, as well as to, to be comfortable, you have to be just in front, it's clear. If you look at the painting from the side, I mean, it's... And as you know, there is at least one painting, the history of art, which was made to be looked at from the side. And it is... You know this painting, it is in the National Gallery. <laughs> Les Ambassadeurs, the Holbein. One of the best texts of Baltrushaitis is about this painting. 30 pages from... He is the one who rediscovered huh, all the story of the painting. So you know Baltrushaitis at least through this. But maybe the... He's not quoted, I don't know. Uh, he is? Okay, good, good. Very good. <laughs> no, but so if you um, look at a painting, you are confronted to it, and the best is to be in front of it. Huh? Uh, it means that you are standing in front of the tableau. So, a tableau is about this position also of the viewer, standing in the world, not lying, not sitting, not uh, kneeling, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, for example, if you look at the tableau uh, kneel, kneeling, uh, uh, it means that you are praying. 
and that the tableau is a picture of devotion. <laughs> the basic uh, 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 definition of the of the tableau is this: a uh, an object, plan object, plan object, delimited, movable, uh, uh, presented to the confrontation of the viewer. Voilà. That's the tableau. So then, this definition can be transformed endlessly. It's a form. It's a form. And it's a form which is so strong. So strong. Imagine what... Imagine how strong it is in historical terms, the tableau, with this definition. It's fundamental in the definition of the Western subject. It's, it goes much, much beyond art history. Because imagine this experience of confrontation standing and not lying, kneeling, and so on. That's what the human, uh, the Western subject was supposed to be, to become, to become. Not to be, to become. So the tableau was about the invention of this uh, human, of this uh, subject, subjectivity, Western subject, Western subjectivity. So when we said that the tableau is a form of an autonomous art object, we are also dealing with an idea of the autonomous subject. A picture is not an image. This is a beautiful distinction uh, uh, you have in English, which, is, which doesn't exist in French. So, when I talk about the tableau, I have also to integrate the picture. Um, and when you think of picture, you have to integrate the tableau. But I think it's impossible. It can go only in the other way. Think it's why I decided, after many years uh, of uh, hesitation, to keep the French word tableau. And I was followed after, um, but it, it really comes from my text. Huh? If the word now tableau is, uh, is uh, uh, used by British writers. But I hesitated myself a lot. Huh? And uh, uh, sometimes I, I was using picture. because. Because the, the word picture is so beautiful. Because a picture is not an image. Voilà. That's a fundamental point. You know? It's like what you were saying last time about form and shape. In English, this very fundamental distinction, form and shape, which doesn't exist in French. It's why every language is full of... Every language is... Uh, you know, every language has... has as, as some strength and some weakness, and it's why you, you need to use several to complement one by the other, you know? And it's more about, you know, the, the sense of the world than just about speaking languages, because uh, you will meet a lot of people who speak five languages, but which are unable to think with these languages. They just use them, you know, like instruments, you know, in a blind way. No, you have to deal with language. It's why literature is so important, because only literature and philosophy can give you the real sense of a, of, of a language. Okay? And I will even go for... Uh, but this is more for the methodology, but anyway. Um, I'm mixing the two, <laughs> the two moments of the seminar. But I would even say that every artist, artist visual artist, works in one language or several languages. That's a, something... No, start to think about it. To, to produce visual works is to think with a language. In, with, it doesn't mean that the visual uh, is uh, an, uh, similar to the verbal. Not at all. I, I think that the visual is very different from the verbal. But you address a visual problem through words, through a structure of mind which is given by words. For example, if you are British, it's difficult to think the tableau. And it's difficult to make tableau. It's why there were, for a long time, few 
real tableau in British culture, and so many in French culture, or Italian culture, first Italian culture, because the idea of tableau comes from the, the Latin language, as I said. But the Italian made a confusion between tableau and quadro. They, they call the tableau quadro, so, and quadro is the cadre, and so it's a reduction of the tableau. So it's why tableau is better. <laughs> so, but if you have in a language the idea of tableau, you can produce painting much, easy, much more easily than if you have picture. But maybe if you have picture as different from image, you can produce a, a painting which has a very strong quality of illustration, for example which could explain, for example, the importance of illustration in British uh, visual art, because it's much stronger than in French visual art. Even if in, if in 19th century uh, there were uh, uh, great illustrators also in, in, uh, in, uh, in French art. J just the last point about this distinction picture-image. Why is it so important for photography? Because an image can be reproducible. An image is about just, uh, for example, a way of seeing. Uh, uh, this idea of a way of seeing, uh, which is even the title of a book by Ellen Levitt. Uh, if you are a photographer who is involved in seeing, in the way of seeing, the image is enough. You don't need the picture. You don't need to think in terms of picture. In Among the photographers who were uh, uh, producing mostly, mainly images and not pictures. Uh, there was at least one, Henri Cartier-Bresson, who was very involved in uh, the history of the pictorialist uh, tradition in the history of painting, and who was producing what I called instantaneous composition. A composition can be instantaneous. Uh, Composition, the idea of composition is, as, as I would now uh, articulate it, fundamental in the history of the tableau. But you can have composition in images and picture too. So composition is not uh, dependent upon the tableau. Huh? Uh, you can have composition outside the tableau, of course. You can have composition in a in an image by Cartier-Bresson, for example, which was made in a second. I mean, no, not in a second, in a fraction of a second. <laughs> so it's a, an instantaneous composition, and you can have composition in a picture. But what is so interesting in the difference between picture and image is that when you, may, when you say picture, you mean that the, the image is something more than just an image. There is something more in the picture. There is a kind of uh, 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 new dimension. And the picture is also uh, more, in the, it's an image which uh, gains a kind of quality as an object. Uh -huh. So the picture is an image which is uh, transformed into an object, which is uh, 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 more of, a, of an object, <laughs> okay? So, it, for that reason, the picture is close to the tableau without being uh, the a tableau, because you don't have in the picture uh, all the characteristics of the tableau. But what you have in the picture is the dif difference with the image. And this, you don't have it in the tableau, because the tableau has nothing to do with the image at the end. The relationship between a tableau and an image is not significant. It's not something significant. Yes, only if you say the tableau is uh, confrontational and so on, in, uh, uh, when the image is uh, uh, um, uh, sizable and so on. But then, if you say the image is sizable, then it is a picture. <laughs> you, you, you get my point? Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Good. So, um, so let's now see my second point. 
uh, there are eight 